Hi everyone, I'm Natasha Doshi. Welcome to the season four of Sapna Rise. We're back again, and this time I must tell you we're starting with a bang. Today we have one of India's most recognized personalities joining us live. Let it be a surprise. Hi Natasha, how are you? How are you, sir? Very well, thank you. Very well, thank you. Uh, lovely to be here, and look forward to a great conversation with you. Absolutely, sir. Welcome to Sapna Rise. Thank you so much. So, uh, to everyone what? present here, we have Mr. Kabir Bedi with us. He's not only left a mark in India, but he's a he's got a huge fan following across the globe. He's been in this industry for more than fifty years, and I feel like words fall short to introduce you today, sir. Well, thank you, thank you. Uh, just saying that is huge, and it's nice to be appreciated. We talk to somebody in the wonderful city of Bangalore, and thank you, sir. Uh, I'm wondering what you have in store for me. <laughs> Got lots of questions, sir. All right. And uh, you know, today I feel like how you felt back in the 1960s when you interviewed the Beatles. This is my <laughs> moment today. <laughs> wow! Thank you for that. That's a huge compliment. Yeah. Um, but really, it's it's wonderful to to have released a book that's uh, that that's touched so many people that have uh, got such wonderful reactions. And I'm just so happy to have shared my life in a way that can be meaningful to people, so they can. Understand my achievements, know my setbacks, uh, know my secrets, uh, whatever it is. That's why people have said, we are amazed you've been so honest in your book. That's because I've told so many secrets uh, of, of my life, of the life of stars, of the life that I live. And all that happened in that very eventful uh, journey across continents. Right. So today we're here to talk about your book, Stories I Must Tell. The emotional life of an actor. Oh, this yes, sir. No, I'm saying it's, it's so wonderful you're showing my book, and I hope people <laughs> uh, know how 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 easy it is to uh, get the book just by coming to Sapna Bookstore and uh, picking it up and having their own copy, or any bookstore in India for that matter. Um, it's it's a wonderful read, and I hope many people uh, read it because it's had. Much as I think highly of my book, but it's really had some great reviews, and that's made a huge <laughs> difference uh, to me because it's nice to be appreciated. Right, I've personally read the book, and uh, this is such a honest and candid uh, book. So I must say, you know, you've bared your soul out, and I, I feel I like uh, uh, I really have so much respect for you for doing that because uh, as it is, your life has been under so much media scrutiny since you're a celebrity. And then, you know, Always. coming out, talking about your failures, talking about hardships, sharing your joys, sorrows. Right, right. Talking about such intimate <clears throat> details, you know, it takes a lot of courage, sir. It did, it did. One, before I started writing, but once I decided to write, I was very clear that I needed to share my life as it was, uh, with my achievements, with my tragedies, with my uh, milestones, with my mistakes, with my frailties, everything. Let it all be there. That's the story. You know, there's only so much you can read about somebody's successes and achievements, what great guys they are. What's the real human journey here? What's the journey of being human with all my... Also, all of us, none of us are perfect. We all have our failures, our faults. And I thought that telling that, um, even though it would open me up to great scrutiny for having lived life like that, done a lot of those things, uh, very unconventional, sometimes very outrageous things. <laughs> but um, that was the story. And that's what I decided to share. So... The, the courage was before I started writing. Once I started writing, then it was the journey of actually going there and, and, and feeling it and re-feeling it and reliving it and retelling it so you, as the reader, can be part of my life and to know what it's like to, to go through that. Um, that was the 
desire and uh, I'm happy that so many people actually related to that and then thanked me for it. So I thought, Jute Parange, they can bouquets you mile uske saath. How was your experience throughout uh, this journey of writing the book, sir? It must have been so difficult. Well, the journey of writing the book was uh, intense. I really enjoyed the process greatly because, firstly, I love writing. I've always loved writing. I've had a love of writing because of my mother, because of my training as a copywriter, and occasional short stories. I always loved writing, but I wasn't a writer because I didn't sit down and write regularly. This okay. time, I made a discipline. I sat down. I wrote it. And I wrote dedicatedly for many hours a day. And I was able to explore my story, my love of the language, um, telling it in an interesting way um, that, that keep people fascinated, always aware of the need for writing it in a way whereby I hoped that you wouldn't be able to stop, that you couldn't put it down, that you were curious <laughs> what happened in the next paragraph, the next chapter. That tension I wanted to keep because... You know, at the end of the day, whether you're seeing a book, reading a book, or seeing a film, or watching things on TV, information is important. But it's also important to be entertained, to, right. to to feel, in some way, that something creative has been stirred inside you, and you um, enjoy that uh, exploration. Whether it's <clears throat> communicating with the author of a book, because that's what you do. You, you talk, you know, in a book to people. Or whether it's it's seeing a great act on the screen, it's all we we want to be entertained. And this is uh, while telling the truth, I wanted to do it in a way that was interesting. And I and for me that writing process became that. How can I tell this as interesting as I can? And I must have enjoyed that process greatly. I've also I'm also enjoying the process of communicating that I've written the book, because believe me. Um, letting people know you've written a book and and promoting and selling a book is as much hard work as writing the book. So nice. this is, uh, but I'm doing it all with joy, with great joy because it's something that I have created, I have written, and I take full responsibility for. Uh, I've told it as truthfully and authentically as I can, and hopefully it, it touches a chord. Absolutely, and you know, sir, the most inspiring thing for me uh, from the book, the takeaway that I felt was so important, was every time you face some hardship in life, you actually resurrected out of the ashes. You know, you came back. Yes. So uh, that's so inspiring. It is one of the lessons of my book, although I haven't written it, written it as these are the lessons of my book. It's not true, but it's implicit. Um, this is what it takes to arrive at success. And when you have major resources, this is what I did to rise above it, to to go back to my inner core and find the strengths that I I, I had from my remarkable parents and their religious um, uh, backgrounds, from my own study of meditation, from what I've learned in life, how to raise yourself from ruin and resurrect your life. This is. Uh, what I've had to do at many points in my life, because my life is like a roller coaster, you know. It, it has all the thrills and chills of a roller coaster, and that's why it becomes such a wonderfully human experience. Because our lives don't run, you know, uh, smoothly all the time. There are reverses we have, there are setbacks we have, and overcoming them is certainly one of the arts of life. And getting success is also one of the arts of life. All that's contained in the journey that I've chronicled in this book. So, was it difficult to be authentic, you know, while writing the book? In considering today's times, where PR and media and publicity is so important for your to maintain your image, so you came across as so raw and uh, candid. Was that a little difficult? Like I said, um, Dasha, it was difficult before I decided to write it. Then I thought, let me write it. I know that in this age of social media, the fact that, you know, oh, he experimented with an open relationship, or oh, he had great financial problems at one time, oh, he made India proud and had these incredible successes, and we never knew what a big star. All those things will come and be discussed and, and talked about. But, you know, 
whenever I worked with PR companies, especially in the West, I always said to them, my PR is tell people who I am. Don't create a false image of me that I then have to live up to because I'm not here to live up to PR dreams. Tell people who I am and, and let the chips fall where they may. And even, and I've always been a sort of kind of rebel in my life, uh, rebelling against conventions, always wanting to change track. I've changed careers a number of times from being a radio broadcaster to advertising, to theater, to film, to Bollywood, to Hollywood. Um, so re being honest is, uh, is important, uh, but also telling you the journey as it actually happened from my heart was was important because I could have tried to do it with rose tinted glasses and make it a a nice uh, fable. It's not that. It's the journey of being human, and that's and having decided that, it wasn't difficult for me. I just told it like it was, and let people say what they want to say. Yeah, and your life itself. So you know, uh, you actually spoken about this that you actually left Delhi. Uh, with 700 rupees in your pocket and here well, you are, you know, an international superstar. So, well, I don't know about international superstar, but I was certainly a very big star in Europe and I'm certainly well known in Hollywood and I've certainly done important films in India. My life has been the life of an actor and an actor on three continents uh, in three film industries, um, film, television, theatre, but also, you know, in the in the visual world, as well as the audio world, because I've done radio and commentaries and documentaries and all that, as well as the um, uh, uh, the world of the printed world now as a, as a writer. So, you know, three mediums within performing arts, three special mediums. Uh, otherwise, uh, from from visual to sound to print, all those are things. But for me, it's important to re that we reinvent ourselves. Whether in success or in failure, it's important to reinvent ourselves. Because when you reinvent yourself, you discover other aspects of yourself. And you can share other parts of yourself. And people see you differently. If I just stuck to being one thing, um, I would be known only in very narrow areas for certain achievements by certain groups of people. By reinventing myself, more groups of people have known me. And I think this is true of everyone, you know. It doesn't matter whether you're a, you're a banker. It doesn't matter whether you are work in um, multinational companies, whether you have a business of your own. If you reinvent yourselves in certain ways, people will see you differently. People will respect you differently. And you will grow as a result of it. And that's what I've always uh, done. Because we are all multifaceted human beings with many talents. And even if you're a banker or a multinational or a, or a shop owner, there is a creative part for you also. There are parts of you that need fulfillment in those areas. And some people have, sing, some people paint, some people um, do amazing social service. Um, they, people f express themselves in different ways because there are different parts of us always. Uh, we are seekers, we are constant seekers, all of us, all of us, you, me, everyone. Uh, so, you know, listening to you, I just want to ask you one thing. Uh, there are so many things and so many small narratives in your book where you actually come forward and thank people for doing the littlest things for you. You know, be it going to another country and somebody bought a jacket for you or those little things, you know, throughout the book, you've been so uh, humble and grateful. And that's really, um, there's a stark difference yeah, Natasha, there's two things that are very, very important in life. One is to be kind. Your kindness doesn't cost anything, but it means a lot. And be kind, not just to your friends and people who matter to you. Be kind even to the small people in your life, the people who serve you. Um, they're also going through life with their problems, yeah. their things. A little kindness, a little generosity helps them in major ways. And the other thing is to be grateful. Because if anyone does something for you, um, always remember that. Always thank them for it. Because they helped you along a very difficult journey called life. And some of them um, uh, might have affected you far more profoundly than you realize. Like, when I was working for All India Radio in Delhi uh, as a freelance reporter, uh, at the, which got me to interview the Beatles, but the reason I was working 
as a freelance reporter was because I had to work my way through college. Now, working my way through college, uh, I finally reached the end of the road with All India Radio. And there was a man in television called Janki Gore. And when I decided I'm coming to Bombay, he said, you know, go meet my friend, Justin Bakuna. And it was such a wonderful act of kindness because he put me in touch with a man in Bombay who I've respected ever since, Justin Bakuna, who was the boss of Lintas, who was the boss of Alec Padamsi, who became my boss. And Alec Padamsi is a guru of theater in Bombay, which led to my theater experience, which led to Bollywood, etc. So kindness is important. Gratitude is important because... The smallest, your life can turn on the smallest things that can change the course of your life. And if people helped you at those critical times, like somebody buying me a coat when I was cold in Rome, that is true kindness, and you must always be grateful for that. Um, never forget the people that help you. Very important. That's something, that's something we're all going to learn from you today, sir. <laughs> well, I'm sure you <laughs> had a lot of wonderful people teaching you that. Um, and I think ingratitude is one of the greatest crimes. The people who do good to you and help you in life, uh, that you do something against them, forget, grat forget showing gratitude that you actually do things against them in any way, is one of the biggest crimes that I can think of. That's true. So, you know, the thing is, I can talk about the contours of my life. I can talk about Delhi to Bombay, Bombay to Italy, Italy to Hollywood, etc. And you think, oh, we know Kabir Bedi's story. But you don't. You don't. Because what is in the book is something you cannot imagine. It's like looking at the sea and thinking, I'm seeing the waves, so I know the ocean. You have to dive in to know what are the real emotions that a person goes through living a life like this. What are the secrets that I'm unveiling about myself? Why are people saying you're so frank, you're so honest? What is it making them say, how could a man tell us all this? Because that's in the book. You can only find it by, by, by reading the book. Because there's so much more that I share beyond, I did this, I, that's in every biography. I did this, I did this, I achieved that, I did this, I met, I got this medal, I got this award. Every biography says that. What's different about my biography, why people are reacting to it, is because I've told it, Firstly, emotionally, and I've told it with great honesty, which means revealing myself, telling you my secrets, telling you the yes. innermost secrets of my relationships, uh, of my achievements and failures, and how I dealt with them. Um, so don't imagine by hearing this discussion that you know my life. You don't. It's in the book, and through the book alone will you find it. Because reading a book is, is um, a very deep personal experience. It's in some senses, more emotional and touching than even watching a movie. And that's why people read books, because to, 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 to understand another mind, another life, uh, but also to be entertained, but also to be touched. And the world of the mind is best expressed through books. Absolutely, sir. And, you know, the way you've written the book, I must say, uh, there are so many points in which I actually felt like I was a part of your life. You know, I'm a fly on the wall. The narrative yes. was so intriguing that I yes. could relate to so many things. Yes, yes. That was the intention. That's how I chose to write it. Because I, 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 I take you there. I, I show you the scenes. You're, you're in the scenes. I'm not just saying, I had a fight with so-and-so. Or I fell in love with so-and-so. I, I, I tell you what that fight was about and how it happened. Right how that love happened, what happened in that relationship, um, what were the dilemmas of that relationship, what are the you know, joys of it, what are the crises within it. And these are human experiences I think people uh, need to know because uh, this is what being human is all about. As well as, you know, um, what it takes to live many lives within one lifetime. That's also part of my journey. And speaking of your journey, sir, I really want to ask you this. Uh, you, you've been such a versatile actor, but right from the start, you didn't want to sing or dance or, you know, be that typical uh, actor from Bollywood. Uh, 
and you've always taken a different route so uh, do you think that you know it takes merit to sustain in bollywood or or it takes this versatility or is uh, you know the whole other package important as well you know every film industry takes a lot of things to succeed and today i really admire the actors because they have to be so multi talented and so versatile especially the younger ones they have to know not just acting and in dialogues they have to know song dance action sequences um they have to know how to film against virtual green backgrounds they have to um they really a quantum step ahead of where we were I had the kind of because I came from the stage I thought I could be a leading man in Bollywood without having to do song and dance numbers but I couldn't dance I'm not a dancer so I figured um it would be um it it would be enough to just uh, perform and be a good actor it was a mistake because Bollywood does song and dance better than anybody and I love watching song and dance I just couldn't do it so because of that I had to think whether I need to go abroad as an actor and going abroad as an actor was in my mind and when the italians came to town and i sensed the opportunity of going abroad i did what it took to nail that audition in rome through that my own expense yeah uh, and and got the role that got me major stardom in europe you know the ability to recognize opportunity is also a very important thing in life um it can it can happen anywhere you could be in a lift going up in a building and somebody says something to you and you think like, hey i could do that i'd like to do that in fact and you follow that and you can change the course of your life because you hear something that resonates for you and that's the other thing opportunity doesn't come with a brass band saying this is me i am opportunity recognize me you have to learn to recognize it in the subtlest of of styles in the subtlest of manners what the universe is trying to tell you subtly read it understand it and if you think it's right then act on it act on it and follow through it will change your life that's what happened to me many times in my life um the ability to recognize the need to change finding the opportunity making that change and discovering continents and careers within that you know it's all part of the same human journey that's so beautiful and inspiring sir and you know uh, speaking of roots you've had a uh, such strong roots sir your father has been a yes. sports person he's been a freedom fighter and he also started the first newspaper in 1938 and your mother as well mm-hmm. she's been a freedom uh, fighter and she turned into a buddhist monk so uh, what do you carry with you today sir from their uh, life well, I, first first day i'm here because of them they gave me life uh but more than life they gave me a great understanding of the need for compassion in life these were people that lived for causes and ideals that they believed um they could have got the best jobs in india they were oxford graduates um but they gave it all up for the freedom of the country and living this very simple life in in economic in economic terms i mean they lived in huts three huts with a buffalo tent that was nearby in a city called in lahore at that time um but it was it, it was a life they lived with with great inner joy uh, they knew nehru uh, the prime minister later prime minister of india they knew gandhi my mother was a handpick satyagraha of gandhi they knew netaji subhash chandra bose and they knew many important historical figures who mm, they related to and then among their closest friends were um gani zel singh who became president in the kumar gujral who became prime minister sheikh abdullah who became the ruler of kashmir various people but they never went for the political rewards even after independence when they could have cashed in on big political rewards they chose a life of first social service and then each discovered and this is the remarkable thing in my book i talk about how each of them had this amazing spiritual epiphany Yes. this tr- is overwhelming spiritual experience each of them that changed their lives and made my mother into a buddhist nun and my father into a new age philosopher now learning from these parents and being their child and what it is to be the child of such parents and how it affects you this is also in my book 
And much of the strength, the inner strength that I have, especially in times of adversity, comes from seeing the way in which they handled the greatest financial crises, the greatest um, career crises, with, with, with the inner calm and, and strength that they had. And I learned from them that two things. One is that you can always um, follow the road less traveled. You can always do things that are different. Uh, you don't have to take the usual path. Secondly, that you can always transform your life in any way you want, if you want to make that commitment. And I've done that many times in my life. So I owe my parents unbelievable debts of gratitude because firstly, of the kind of people they were. Secondly, right. because of all they gave me. And there's a whole chapter in my book about them. Um, three books have already been written on my mother. Three books should be written on my father, but I've written the chapter on them. And that's one of the chapters in my book, which is composed of many, many stories, many, many themes, many, many relationships, many happenings. Um, so, and also it, the whole chapter on my uh, spiritual explorations and discoveries, which I've also chronicled in my book, because all these are important parts of my life. And that's what my book is about. And I hope people learn from it. I hope they're entertained by it. I hope they are enlightened by it. I hope they are moved by it, touched by it. Um, and you know, the strange thing is that even people who've known me for years, is that Kabir, we never knew so many things about you, which I've revealed in this book, because there were secrets I never told people before, aspects of my life I never told people before. Right. So it's gratifying. It's all part of the same journey. And it all began with my parents, who I bow before in, in their memory and with, my, with, with gratitude. Uh, tell me, Natasha, can I ask you, when you read the book, is there a particular part that was your favorite part, a particular chapter that jumped out at you or remained with you or affected you the most? Or uh, when you read the book, was it the, um, what was the chapter that uh, was your favorite? So to be honest, uh, throughout the book, the one thing that I picked up uh, was so beautiful of how you maintained a dignified silence or how calm you were through these turbulences in life, be it your yeah. personal relationships or failures. Time and again, you know, how you reacted so calmly. There could have been a reaction from your side. You could have given interviews. You could have uh, done a lot of things, but you maintained such dignified silence and calm throughout. Uh, so I mm. feel like that was one thing that I learned. And the chapter yeah. that uh, moved me the most was about your son. I uh, right. you know, had tears right. at the end of it. And yes. uh, the way you yes. narrated it, so I feel um, like I'm really sorry for your loss. It, no, it's important to talk about that too because there's so much stigma uh, 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 attached to such events, tragic events. And I think it's, it's it should be seen with more compassion. But, <clears throat> um, you know, I found, I used to believe that truth fell out, which is why I often kept what you called a dignified silence. I thought truth would come out in the end. In some cases it did, but I found that sometimes truth doesn't come out in the end. And therefore, that was also one of the reasons why I wrote this book, to tell my truth, to tell my story, to say, this is what really happened. Irrespective of what you may or may not have read, this is what really happened. And I just want to tell you, set the record straight on that as well. Uh, with no malice to anybody, but I just want you to know, this is what actually happened. And I hope you are richer for the, for the knowledge of it. The raw, unadulterated truths uh, of your life. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> Let me ask you, you one for... thing, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Okay, we have time for the last question, certainly. Yes, I wanted to take up certain audience questions. And before that, one question. If you got a chance to star as a leading actor in a movie, whom would you cast alongside yourself? Who would the directors be? Who would the actors be? <laughs> uh, I can't answer that question, Natasha. I can't answer that question because there's so many great directors that I would like right, to work sir. with. 
so many great actors and actresses I would love to work with. Just naming one um, would be unfair. It would be unfair. And it also depends so much on what the film was, what the project was. Each director, each actor have their strengths, have their weaknesses, um, have their different abilities. So it would depend on particular cases. I don't, I don't want to hazard guesses and say, yes, I would love to act with X, Y, Z. Right. Uh, I would love to act with all the good actors. I'd love to work with all the good directors. I know this is not the answer you're looking for, but <laughs> that's the truth of the matter. I, I, I'm not good at making lists. Um, I but I do have great respect for talent, of, especially in this generation, who have produced some right. amazing actors and actresses. Sir, so if you're okay, can we take a couple of audience questions for about sure, we can take minutes? It. Yes, of course. So, uh, Shah 18 asks us a director you consider as the best. I can't answer that. I can't answer that. Many okay. directors doing many great things. Um, the best director, there's many great directors. Too many to name. So Sarah is asking us, if you get a chance to relive one moment in your life again, which would it be? If I get a chance to relive one moment in my life, which would it be? Um... relive one moment in my life. Well, it has to be um, between um, three things. One is the time when I met and interviewed the Beatles. The other was when, 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 when I had this extraordinary success in Italy. Um, and the third was uh, uh, the day I, I, I proposed to my wife, Perrine Dussange, on the steps of Rome in Italy. Uh, which is a really touching, romantic moment for me. And she has been the end of my quest for finding a truly wonderful, fulfilling relationship. Um, so I mean, those are among the, the top three. But there's many great moments in my life I, I would happily relive because I have also had euphoric moments of absolute joy um, with people, with events, even being knighted by... Uh, Italy, the, the highest civilian honor was a great high for me. Many great moments. Um, and I've, um, yes, I could relive many of those moments. But thank you for asking the question. That's beautiful, sir. And the last question would be what's your message to young India in these challenging times of COVID? It's been a difficult situation. My message to young India at this difficult time of COVID is um, you are in this world right now at a time when it's going through extraordinary change and we've got to adapt to a whole new world. Um, in adapting to this world, um, you will know ways in which you have to change, but certain things don't change. You must still remember the greatest importance of finding a partner who will be the best husband or wife to your children. And don't make those decisions lightly. <laughs> and secondly, decide with great care how you're going to make a living because that will affect you very, very, very deeply. Don't just, right. just do it for money. Don't just do it for because somebody gives you an offer that you jump on the first offer. Think about it carefully. Think about it carefully. Uh, you have one life, you have many uniquenesses to contribute to the world and to society. How can you best do that in the most fulfilling way to you? Think about both those things, um, your partner in life and your what you do in life deeply. Because you get those sorted, 80% of your problems, problems will be sorted. And I wish you love and I, you, I mean, you have my blessings for a very successful and fulfilling future. That's so great to hear from you, sir. I, in fact, want to wish you all the best from all of us at Sapna Book House. Uh, we really Thank hope you, we could do this uh, someday in person, speak about your book, meet you. Wonderful. Would love to do that. Look forward to it. And Absolutely. in the meantime, uh, remind people that getting my book is as easy as a stroll to Sapna right. Book House. Um, or um, reaching out in any other way they can. 
Absolutely. But do read my book because I think there's a lot in it for you and for your generation. Um, in fact, this, my book is dedicated to my son Siddharth and all young, uh, and all young professionals lo like him. So I hope many of the younger generation read my book because there's much in it for them. As much as people of older generations will relate to a lot of the things in them to know what it's like to be alive in the 60s and 70s and Hollywood, 80s and 90s. All that's the history of our times. All that's there. But at heart of it is a deeply human story. Absolutely, sir. And I'm sure there's so much that a lot of people will learn uh, from your book. And obviously, they'll get to know you as a person a lot better. So to I everyone... Please grab your copy from any Sapna Book House outlet. And in case you are not able to travel, you could visit sapnaonline.com and get your copy. Thank you, Natasha. I thank, thank Sapna so Bookstore. Much, and I thank you for this wonderful discussion. All the best. Thank you, sir. It was an honor sharing the screen with you. And I thank all those who listened in, asked questions, and shared this chat with us. Thank you. Thank Bye you now. so much, sir. Thank you.